and episode 71 of the pop culture podcast starts right now hey everybody how's it going hey i'm i'm good Tom, how you doing i'm doing well doing well good hey have you been watching the obi-wan series we just had the, the last episode yes i have i finished it but we yeah. can talk oh, it right well. We'll talk about that. Richard, did you watch that Obi Wan by any chance? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't seen that yet. I've been hearing about it, like on, like whenever you go on social media, you know, you can always tell what oh, yeah. everybody's watching. It's just like you know, you see all of these posts about Obi Wan in the last few days, and then, and then a few weeks before that, everybody was watching something else. Yeah, yeah. So it's it always it always kind of comes in waves. Yeah, uh, I, man, I really loved I loved Obi Wan. Man, it was everything I could have asked for in an Obi Wan series. I thought it, uh, it was great. I wanted a different ending. I wanted a different, ah, I thought the ending was awesome. I thought it was perfect. Uh, it could have been a little different. It was a, it was a really good self contained story. Like I'd be fine if this was the only Obi Wan story we got until we go into Episode Four, A New Hope. Like this, it, they just tied it up perfectly. I loved it. It was great. The new characters were great. Uh -huh. Moses Ingram was great as Riva, you know, and she's getting a lot of hate, the anger. They're calling her the next Jar Jar Binks. Why? She was not. She was I not don't get bad. that. They a lot of stuff, but kind of sick with seeing Darth Vader taking a beat down. <laughs> I mean, you know? well, I think with you know with Star Wars fans, you know, Star Wars fans like are are like you can't please all of them whatever you do there's always mm -hmm. like unless it's like the first two movies and then then pretty much everybody likes that but other than that then there's pretty huge disagreement on everything I've, else i've always said a uh, movie is as good as all the cool movies have the coolest bad guys right so now if you time and you make your bad guy weaker and weaker you take from the whole movie that with Hulk Hogan and started having everybody beat him, and then it was no big beat Hulk Hogan. And well, see, Vader was still, he was still a learner, like he said in episode four. He said, "You know, when I left you last, I was a learner. Now I'm the master." He was so he was still he still had lessons to learn from Obi Wan, even though he was this powerful Sith Lord. He you know still learned some lessons from Obi Wan. That's how I took it anyway. I I don't know. I thought it was fucking amazing. Like that that last it was fight. Cool, man, dude, but I that was what I wanted to see. Like Vader was badass in this episode, you know, walking, you know, when he, uh, walking down the Nobody street. Nobody ever finished anyone off. What's up with that? Vader, like Vader did. Well, they, yeah, they, they killed people, but, uh, Jedi. Well, I don't want to spoil it. Vader with, with the lady, uh, Shai. Yeah. Molly loved that show. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just were, should have been killed that were not you just left them hurt and walked away instead of finishing them see the the theme across all the shows I'm there was a you and you. there was an article that i read um a cinema i think it was a cinema cinema blend um each and every episode like there were six episodes of obi-wan and each episode like episode one the thematically it was the same as like the phantom menace episode two was thematically the same as the Clones. each episode of obi-wan is thematically the same as each george lucas installment oh, wow. the more i think about that i'm like yeah that really makes sense you know episode five so much like the empire strikes back where like the the rebels are out like they're on the ropes they're running from the empire like it, it really like now that i read that and i think about it like yeah right now i have to watch it six it's really episodes clever again. like do it like that <laughs> Like, you know, plan it all out. Like, you know, I, I definitely like it. It's nice to have that kind of, you know, direction and, you know, having like a plan and that kind of sense of cohesion because I didn't I didn't really sense that, you know, with like the the, the sequel trilogy, like of the movies, you know, I, I, I didn't sense that there was like kind of like an overarching theme there. So I think... It's, I'm glad that they did that with Obi Wan because that's definitely that's definitely a step in the right direction. Well, like George Lucas says, it's like poetry; it rhymes. <laughs> yeah, the, you know the sequel trilogy. Funnily enough, J.J. Abrams and Lawrence Kasdan they had you know they had everything planned out, like they had the roadmap of where they wanted Episode Eight and Nine to go. But when Ryan Johnson came in, he said, you know, 
I want to do my own thing. Like, I don't, I'm going to throw this treatment out. I want to do my own thing. And Kathleen Kennedy trusted his vision and let him do what he wanted to do for better, or for worse. You know, there's a lot of people that love the last Jedi. Some people don't. Um, I didn't really care for the last Jedi. I don't, I didn't really like where they, where he took the story, but I mean, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a gorgeous film. I mean, you know, I did out of all three of the sequel trilogy movies, I lost, I seen the last Jedi the most. I've seen that movie the most. And each time I see it, it grows on me a little bit more. So eventually I think I'll come to really appreciate it. But I don't know. Did you see the sequel trilogy, uh, Richard? Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. And that's why, like when you said that, you know, about each episode of Obi-Wan having the, you know, being kind of planned out that way. And I was like, you know, that's a, that's a good idea. <laughs> Cause I could see like with the sequel trilogy, like the impression I got from watching it, my overall impression is that it's like, you know, well, naturally they want to, you know, they want to, because it's, it's very popular and they want to like really appeal to that nostalgia that people had when they were kids. So I didn't really, I didn't think it was a particularly strong storyline yeah. Compared to the like what it the original trilogy because it felt like more they were just bringing it back because it's like you know we have the property rights now now we have to come up with a story that was although of course there are parts of it that are you know really good and really well done but overall it it feels like they were you know not not very well thought out yeah. I would say. Yeah, I remember seeing, I saw episode seven in the theater and I was so excited, man. I just, I loved that movie so much. I thought, oh, Star Wars is back. I, you know, the way that movie ended, the cliffhanger, I'm like, I cannot wait to see episode eight. Like, I, well, I remember when I saw it in the theater, people were clapping when it started because yeah. they were, you know, when they played the music with the Me crawl, too. that like, and not, not too, I haven't been in too many theaters where people applauded. So that was, yeah. that was memorable. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I remember, uh, you know, it was what, 2018, Last Jedi came out. I was diagnosed with cancer at the very end of October. Sure. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Um, and I had, so I had surgery in like the middle of November. And I already, you know, before I was diagnosed with cancer, I already had my tickets for The Last Jedi purchased. And I told my surgeon, I said, you know, I've got movie tickets, so I can't die on the operating table. Like, that's all I thought about was like, I can't die before I see The Last Jedi. Like, I can't, I don't want to die before I see my kids grow up. I don't want to die before I see meet my grand, my grandkids. Yeah. I don't want to die before I see this next Star Wars movie. That's all I could think of. And uh, so I, you know, I, I have, it's pretty major surgery. You know, I had a, a mastectomy. So like half my chest was removed and I had all these tubes coming out of me with like drains and like two weeks after I had this major surgery. I go and I see the last Jedi. Like I, I got to see it. I'm not missing this. Like I'm not supposed to go out. I'm not supposed to do anything, but I'm not going to miss the last Jedi. I was so fucking disappointed. Like I was, so that's a lot of hype, you know, to build. Into it. God, <laughs> I just remember I, I said, what the fuck numerous times in that movie. Like when Leah princess Leia does the Mary Poppins thing. I just looked at my friend. I'm like, what the fuck? What, what is this? Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, they had already announced Ryan Johnson's new, you know, trilogy of movies. And I was walking out of that film with my friend and I say, mark my words. I guarantee you, I promise you, Ryan Johnson will never touch Star Wars again. This is not going to be, this is not going to go down very well. And what is something you never hear about anymore these days? Ryan Johnson's trilogy. Um, he will never touch Star Wars again. I, I, I just don't see it happening. I mean, I, I don't know, like. I understand why people like it. It's it's a gorgeous looking film and there's some really cool elements of it, but it just wasn't Star Wars to me. It just didn't feel like Star Wars. It could be a generational thing too. Like it could be. It could Star be. Wars is changing with the generations and we're no longer the target audience. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, the original trilogy, you know, the 1970s generation, that was my generation. I was five when I saw episode four. I remember it clear as Claire's Bell. And then you've got the prequel trilogy. That's a new generation of kids that mm -hmm. came up. That's their Star Wars. And now the sequel trilogy, I'm seeing the same thing. It's 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 a new generation. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Um, you know, I'm excited that people like Star Wars. I'm excited that we're still getting more Star Wars. 
I don't care if they're movies or television shows. If we get television shows like Obi Wan, I'm fine with no movies because Obi Wan was it's like a five hour long awesome movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's like they should probably like wait a little bit longer before doing like another like movie trilogy if they want to do another one, and you know take more time you know to figure out like where to take it next. Although I think, you know, with the original series, like it made such a strong impression that everything since then has been like a pretty tough act to follow. Like, it's kind of amazing, you know, to think about like how many like iconic, you know, lines like may the force be with you. I am your father, you know, came from that, you know, the original series and the characters are iconic. Yeah. Too. So I think all of that makes such a huge impression that, you know, of course, you know, you want more, you want to continue it. But at the same time, it's, it's, you know, it's hard. It's a tough, it's a tough act to follow. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Another line. I say that all the time when mom loves me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. I know. <laughs> Well, let's see. Let's see uh, what's in the news here. Let's talk about Ezra Miller. Oh, this guy is Ezra. 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 What do you, what do you think about uh, old Ezra, Richard? You been following him? Yeah, oh, I Maddie. mean, I guess he's uh, he he seems to be kind of unraveling some for some reason. Like I, I, I always try to like you know I'm, I'm very interested in psychology, so I don't really know. I don't know enough about his background to know why, but there's definitely something going on with him. And he's kind of like, you know, like you're just like getting into fights, like just attacking people randomly. It's pretty bizarre. Yeah. yeah. I actually took a class called neuropsychopharmacology. And that just oh, wow. basically says when you're on drugs, you're psychotic. So I would probably just not try to dig into his mind and just realize drugs. it's probably he's on drugs. <laughs> he shouldn't be studied. This is a guy on drugs. <laughs> well, I always, I always like, like I go down like rabbit holes, like for anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. So the latest thing with, with uh, Ezra is um, there's a, he's got a family. They've got a family. He's non-binary. They've got a family staying with them at their 96 acre Vermont farm. And apparently Ezra's got these guns just lying around all over his house. And he's got these little kids running around. And apparently, like, the little kids were, like, putting bullets in their mouths. That's a lot worse than anything I had heard. Yeah, well, that, yeah, this that is just, just broke. That just came out, that just came yeah. out today. That just came out today. Um, well, I went out for a walk today, so I guess I was blissfully you go, aware. You go out for a walk. Ezra Miller does something else. Go out for a walk. Ezra Miller's putting bullets lying around the house. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, as far as farmhouses go. I mean, having guns lying around is not that big of a deal, right? That no. typical farmhouse. I mean, you would imagine finding a gun in a farmhouse. I would. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I guess as that. long as it's like unloaded, then you know, if you're, yeah, and if there are like kids, then it's a problem oh. because, like, I, I can trust myself like 99 percent of the time not to, you know, misuse weapons. But there's always, I mean, there's like the obsessive compulsive part of my brain telling me like, what if you fired it? But I'm like, no, no, I'm not doing that. Fuck you! I'm not yeah. doing that. So the mother, the kids, the mother, it's like you got to be a little bit more careful. The mother told Rolling Stone that Ezra Miller's farm has been a safe haven for her and her children, and says that the firearms are for self-defense purposes, and they are stored in a part of the house that the children never go in. Apparently, this woman, she Ezra Miller, met this woman in Hawaii. She was uh, part of a domestic abuse victim, so she had to leave her home. And Ezra said, "Well, come live with me." Um, and that was oh. a bad idea, was listening, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good idea to go to his home. If, so apparently if Ezra Miller, there's, places. there's a cannabis company running running their company out of Ezra Miller's home. 
So yeah, it's I a mean, weed farm. Weed farm, basically. Yeah. There you go. He's on drugs. We get. He's living <laughs> on a weed farm. So while he has to be on a lot of uh, weed, like a psychotic amount of weed. I I think there's probably more. Dead so. more. Yeah. yeah. And something definitely going on. And I was talking to Tom earlier about this. I don't like. I don't see this ending peacefully for Ezra. Um, you know, people are throwing around the cult word that he's he's running a cult, and you know, cults usually don't end very peacefully. You know, they don't no. they don't well to people. So I, you know, with all these guns laying around, and I don't know, I don't see it I don't see it ending well. Uh, of course, it's a it's a headache for Warner Brothers because he's the star of the Flash, and he's yeah. you know, the one of the stars of their Dumbledore movie, their Fantastic Beasts. Well, I don't know. This is a- actual classic psychology move that the woman and her children uh she doesn't realize that she's also be that she's a victim at this point because he's yeah, done well, so like much for her to like one abusive guy then then often you know like especially if you grow up in that environment then that just seems normal to you in a way so yeah. That makes it easy to get taken advantage of somebody else, and it, and it's hard to like. Re- and I've had the same problem myself, you know, like because I I had a sometimes you know tumultuous relationship with my parents, so I end up being drawn to people who are very mentally unbalanced, and I've realized that about myself, and I can see the warning signs more clearly. So I hope that. After this, she's able to see the warning signs more clearly, too, and she's able to get away from Ezra just like she was able to get away from the guy she was involved with before. Well, the the main question you got to ask her right off the bat is, are you dependent on this man? Can you leave? Okay, you are dependent. What would happen if you tried to leave? Yeah. Would you worry? That's like where the questioning needs to start with her because she's kind of got the Stockholm syndrome. You yeah. know, oh, it's okay. They're all protected. Guns are put away, everything. Then how do we know your babies are chewing? Yeah, on bullets? exactly. He's got, yeah. he's got, he's got two women. He's got the, the 18 year old that he uh, took from her parents. Wow. Uh, Jakarta, whatever her name is. Yeah. yeah. She's he, apparently he's been grooming her since she was 12. So Allegedly. that's why the cult word is going yeah. on. And, well, yeah, well, it she's might actually her... be a cult. I mean, it, it seems more and more cult. Like, like I had just heard like the like only part of the story. This is a lot darker and weirder than I thought. Uh, oh. The girl he was grooming, oh, yeah. he uh, he does a typical abusive behavior thing. Is he paid for her school? So now the parents and her are feel obligated to do what he says yeah. because he gave an enormous amount of money, but that's just something he's going to always hold over her head as a bargaining Absolutely. chip. And, and that's a, exactly a what my dad was like too. So that's that like, he would always say, think about all the things I've done for you. Like whenever, like I tried to argue with something he was doing, he would always bring that up. So that is very, very true. You should never hold a gift over someone's head no, and then no. bribe them to do something for it. It's not. Uh, then it's, it's not, not a, a gift. gift. Yeah, it's just like it's like a manipulation tool. Yep. Here's a picture I sent Tom earlier. So that that fellow with the Indian headdress there, that's uh, Takata's father. They were po- Ezra and the father were posing for a picture, and uh, Ezra just pulled out a handgun from his pocket. <gasps> oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> um, just you know, as you do. And you know, waved it in the air as they were taking the picture. Wow. I don't know where the mask came from, but you know, it's normal stuff, right? <laughs> Completely normal. But you know what? Look what happened with Kanye. I that was on a trajectory to hell and it just fizzled. Yeah, I Kim Kardashian just posted something, I think, on Instagram where she said, uh, you know, thank you, Kanye, for being the best dad to our kids. Now they're back. Yep. And that was going sour so quick. That was getting, um, was getting weird. Yeah. So I'm not yeah. going to say for sure. I said that one was going to end bad and it didn't. So who knows? 
I don't know. So where do you, th- what do you think Warner brothers does with, with the flash? What are they going to do? You know, there, some yeah. people said uh, they just need to reshoot uh, Ezra scenes, recast the flash, uh, but he's in almost every scene in the flash. Apparently. <laughs> and he plays multiple versions of the flash. So you'd have to reshoot like the entire film, you know, everybody would have to, you know, be available for their film for the, for the film. Um, it, it'd be like a logistical nightmare to reshoot this whole thing. What do you think they do? I mean, it's, well, it's really, you know, I, I don't think the studio would ever, any, no, nobody wants to be in that situation, but if I were them, I would, uh, and I'm, and this is me talking, you know, cause I'm used to working with low budgets and trying to save money, but I would just release the movie as is and hope that by the time it comes out, people have moved on to like a different scandal and then if this is still going on then for the next movie then absolutely replace him because he's a loose cannon and you don't know what he's capable of but i think that you know when you've when you've already spent like so much money on it you know and people and i i guess people were relatively understanding because you know they didn't know that he was going insane when they originally cast him so i would just release the movie as is but i completely understand if they want to reshoot it you know to avoid being associated with him it's been done apparently it's been done in japan since october Uh, they spent 200 million on it yeah okay I, i think hollywood is gonna send out the hitman and then they're going to open up the Ezra Miller rehabilitation drug clinic with the proceeds of the movie, and then they're going to move on. So they look yeah. like heroes. They don't have to change yeah, exactly. the movie. And There's a lot of ways to spin it to make it look good after the movie comes out. But mm-hmm. yeah, spending another $200 million is is... A tough decision to approve of. Yeah, there's some people that think it's just gonna they're just gonna dump it on HBO Max. Some people are, you know, like you said, Richard, they're some people think that Warner Brothers is just gonna wait out the scandal. You know, hopefully Ezra they're they're gonna probably cross their fingers, hope Ezra doesn't do anything crazy again. Crazy er. Yeah, crazier or and just wait for the scandal to die down. Who knows? I mean it's it's coming out next June, so we've got a year to go. Yeah. Who knows what's happen between now and then? Uh, but yeah, it's been done. Yeah, it's I been... mean, this might be a 15 minutes of fame type of thing. Like every, like I think, and I do, you know, sympathize because I could put myself in the shoes of, you know, how stressful it must be, you know, to be famous in a way. And it's, and it's easy to unravel, which is not defending any of the things that he's done. But I think that definitely you know being famous can make you go crazy in a lot of cases so there may be there probably will be somebody else who is the new crazy celebrity that's getting the most attention by the time it comes out next year so i don't know yeah well according to reports now warner brothers has dropped ezra uh, he won't be back as the flash anymore well that's He's done. that's good I, I, well, he needs to be held accountable yeah, and you yeah, know if I'm if, you, if you're just rampaging, then and it's like, hey, you get to welcome welcome back, get another ten million dollars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm being completely honest, he's never going to work in Hollywood again. I don't see him getting any more high profile jobs. Maybe yeah. he'll do some stuff here and there, but yeah, he's his days of like super stardom, they're done. Yeah. You know, in DC, man, Warner Brothers in DC, they're in a pickle because they've got Amber Heard in Aquaman too. Yeah. But I, heard that she you know there was a test screening yesterday with an amber heard less cut um her part in aquaman 2 wasn't really that big to begin with um maybe 10 minutes worth of screen time in the beginning and the end um but i've, I've heard that they've cut her out but they're yeah they're, they're in a pickle yeah, that's e- that's easier like if she's not the star of the movie that makes it a lot easier yeah yeah it does it does um and amber heard's another one i don't think we'll see her in any no big- I just read an article about her that they did scientific beauty screenings of the face 
and have it all mapped out perfectly to a conch shell about beauty and nature. It's like a one, two, eight, sixteen, thirty-two beauty radius, and she rates as perfectly beautiful. <laughs> she is. She's, she's the, the most perfectly beautiful human, according to well, science. She she is a, she's a beautiful woman. She is a very <laughs> woman. Um, and she's a good actress too. You know, I, some yeah. of her stuff is really good, but she's just. I, know, I think she's insane. Think she's so, crazy. do you think this could be a um, Robert Downey Jr. situation where if they clean up for five years, they can come back Iron Man and yeah. everybody loves the comeback story? Robert Downey Jr. wasn't violent with anybody. He just did drugs. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it, well, I think that, you know, everybody has short memories, you know, to some degree. And I really like the, the quote from Chinatown, everybody becomes respectable when they last long enough. Old yeah. whores and ugly buildings become respectable when they last long enough. So I think that, yeah, if you wait long enough and people stop being, you know, upset by the idea of seeing this actor, you know, in a movie, then, you know, people forget over time or it seems like or they even feel nostalgia for the scandal that happened five or 10 years ago. And so, yeah, I think that in many cases, that's what happens that it's good, you know, to have time to get sane again, you know, to reform after completely losing it. So, but I don't Russell, know. We'll see what happens. Russell Brand was pretty off the deep end in, drugs and he yeah. came back clean and sober oh yeah you now so yeah but see these guys like robert downey jr and russell brand they were only hurting themselves you know mm -hmm. true ezra miller he's on video choking women out um he's got multiple restraining orders for violent um violent attacks and i don't know i i i just i don't know if ezra miller can come back from that i don't know how you can come back from that yeah, I mean, well, he might go to prison eventually, and that's kind of like when you go to prison, that's pretty rare for anybody who's famous. But, like, he could, I guess if he goes to prison, that would be a pretty big wake up call. And, I mean, as long as you serve your time for the crimes you've committed, then, you know, like you've done the legal punishment and you've reformed, then. I would be, you know, okay with yeah. like a comeback after that if he if he could do it. If you go to prison, you're square with yeah. society the day you walk out, right? Nobody exactly. can be mad at you. I paid my time. You should be. You should be. But <laughs> yeah. really, uh, the court of public opinion, you know, they don't they don't care. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I will see. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pretty messed up situation. But uh, yeah, yeah. Oh well, Richard, why don't we talk about you? You're a filmmaker. Oh yeah. Well, I, I haven't gotten that high up yet that I can go crazy and be like a major scandal. But Not yet. maybe one of these days I'll be involved in like a scandal of that magnitude. Oh, I hope so. What scandal? <laughs> would you, what scandal would you want to be involved in? What's your ideal scandal you'd want to be in? Well, I guess the best possible scandal would be that, like, people sex watch tape. My... <laughs> Maybe not my sex tape, but what I was thinking is that people watch my. <laughs> it's a sex no, I mean, tape. I guess it's not. I guess it's not the worst. I mean, if people think it's like a good sex tape, then it's they're much worse. <laughs> it's it's most... reviews on <laughs> <A> sex tape. <laughs> Great and fake accounts and thumbs up in it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever seen a bad sex tape. No, I mean, like I mean, like and I would. Like if I, I want to bring up Hulk Hogan again. But... Oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's two Hulk Hogan's I brought up today. Yeah, but now yeah, I saw that sex tape, and now I can't get that image out of my, like those super tan ass cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> can't get that out of my head now. They're so tan. <laughs> He's like a human hot dog. That's his skin <laughs> color. It's just hot dog. 
<laughs> the whole body's a hot dog. He's so American. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, you know, if you're curious, I advise you to Google Hulk Hogan 60. Yeah. You can find it. You can find it. So uh, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of the sex tapes, you know, get leaked, but it's really, you know, a good way to get publicity. Right. Because, yeah. you know, everybody loves to pay attention to sex tapes, especially if they think they were leaked from forbidden mm-hmm. sources. Whereas, like, if you're just like, if you're more open about it and you're just like, you know, I'm, I'm filming myself having sex. I'm doing porn now that people are like, eh, I'm not so interested, but, but the sex tape, you know, that, that gets you in the spotlight. Yeah. That's the voyeurism. There you go. There you go, Richard. Yeah. I think, I think you should leak a sex tape before your film comes out. <laughs> that's what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leak it. We'll leak it for you. <laughs> You know, for like two hundred fifty dollars, you can get Times Square for ten seconds of advertising. Oh wow! That's where we're leaking it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can last longer than ten seconds. Well, we only want the final. 10. Yeah, I'm not, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, before you do it, you should go to a tanning booth for like a month straight. Yeah, yeah. So you get hot dog color. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have like natural tanning, like when I walk outside, like that, I get it like a natural. Well, yeah, like yeah. you can see, like a little bit of like redness here. That's like my Chicago style tanning. <laughs> you got to walk, you got to go outside and take a walk in a G string then. So you get tan. Yeah. All over. <laughs> it's bigger right. tan. So we, we met, yeah, we met at Days of the Dead in Chicago. Are you, uh, do you live in Chicago? Are you down there? I do, yeah. Yeah, I'm up in Milwaukee, a little bit, yeah. uh, a little bit Not north. Tom's a little bit, Tom's a little bit more north. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good meeting you. Uh, very yeah, excited. Great to meet got, you guys. Uh, got to look at you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your film coming out. So the movie I have coming out soon is called Fang. I wrote directed and executive produced it. Fang tells the story of Billy Cochran. He's a young guy. He's a janitor and Billy is autistic. So he's not like, he doesn't have a lot of friends. He doesn't go to a lot of parties. He's isolated most of the time. And Billy lives with his mother, Gina, who is, who has Parkinson's. So they have a, kind of they have a very tense relationship as each of their issues are kind of clashing with each other and so one night billy wakes up he has to use the bathroom in his home and so billy pulls open the shower curtain and there's a rat in the bathtub and so the rat jumps out it chases billy around the house And then it bites him. And so from that point forward, Billy starts turning into a rat. And that's the most I could say about the plot of Fang without giving too much away. But it's but most of the movie focuses on Billy's transformation from man into rat. It's a kind of that reminds me of the fly, but with the rat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the fly. That's that's like a great, you know, compliment, you know, to be to be compared to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the fly was awesome. I saw that in the theater. Oh, yeah. I saw that too young as a kid. I saw that at like <laughs> four. Wow. Yeah, that's, the dude that's was arm wrestling the guy. Yeah. yeah, that was too young. I was too young for the fly. Yeah. That was, that was probably the the most normal David Cronenberg film I've ever seen. I just saw Crimes of the Future. David Cronenberg's newest film. Oh yeah, I saw that too. Uh, it was just a mind fuck. Oh my, I don't even know what I watched, but it was amazing. Like it was so good, but it was so yeah, weird. Yeah, the surgical concepts. It's it, like it feels like watching like like the impression I got from watching it is that it's like it feels almost more like an alien planet yeah. than our future because it's like they're in such a different kind of plane of reality. 
Yeah. And, you know, they're the conflicts over surgical performance art, I think. It's definitely something where you could say there's never been another, you know, story that's quite like this. It's a true original. Yeah, you you saw it? You did see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to yeah. see it again because I, you know, it's one of those it movies. Definitely, it definitely makes an impression. Oh, yeah. Like those yeah. chairs. What the hell are their breakfast chairs? I, I yeah, the chairs stuff. were that. Yeah, that I that was that was really cool. It was it was cool, but it was weird. Like I want a breakfast chair like that. Like Tom, they had these like alien looking HL Tiger alien looking chairs that they sat in when they ate their breakfast, and like the chair would move you around. You know, presumably to like get your digestion to work. It was just weird. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got to. You don't need to move around to do that. Your body well, does it. Yeah, dude, that's, that's, that's a good movie to review on um, movies with Mark. If you guys, okay. if you guys are looking for a movie, Crimes of the Future. I want to know what Mark Metcalf thinks of that movie. Okay, Crimes of the Future. I still haven't seen it. I guess the only thing I've seen like that was The Fly Too Young. <laughs> oh, it was it was weird. It was really good though. Really good, but weird. I remember my dad, specifically the part when the guy was arm wrestling and ripped his arm apart and then puked on it. And I'm like, what's he doing? <laughs> He's going to eat it. I'm like, ah, running away. Like, that I mean, when terrible. I was four, I probably wouldn't have even, like, understood most of the movie. And I think that's, I think The Fly is Cronenberg's best movie. And I think part of that is that you know, it's anchored in the very strong, you know, relationship between the, you know, the characters between Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis. And you feel really invested in their characters and their connection to each other before he starts turning into a fly. So it's a very adult movie in that sense. And then it's very adult violence in the second half when he's disintegrating but it probably, like, I mean, when I was four, I would have thought it was probably pretty gross and cool, but I wouldn't have really understood what it was. Well, I was watching my dad skin coons in the basement because he was a trapper and a hunter. Yeah. We had loaded shotguns in the house. <laughs> That's why I didn't find it weird. Well, when yeah. you hear the geese flying over in your exterior zone, you can take one a day. I ain't got time to load the gun when I hear them. I got to step outside and blast yeah. Well, I mean, growing up in the suburbs is a whole other ball game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, growing up in Chicago, we probably heard about the same amount of gunshots as in the country. <laughs> Depends on the side. What's what's like? How did you grow up on North Side or South Side? Well, actually, I I grew up in St. Louis, like when I was younger, and then I moved up here later. And I also lived in Florida for a year and a half, too, which is, is something that's easier I do in, in than, like, in practice. Because, like, when you're up north, you know, Florida seems like this paradise. And then when you get down there, like, it's, it's hot. It rains for six months. There are hurricanes and gators and mosquitoes and sharks. And retired people. <laughs> What's the word? So I moved about? back to Chicago. You said enough. I'm out. <laughs> Too many sharks. I'm out of here. Yes. I, I, I can't stand the cold. I hate the cold weather. Now that I'm getting older, I don't oh, like yeah. I'm going to move south. I don't want to be in the cold weather. If I could just move to Florida for six months out of the year, I would do it. I hate the cold. Like this weather we have. Yeah, live, they live there in the winter and here in the summer. Believe me, that's that's the best. Yeah. One day, one day we're stuck living here because of the schools. My wife likes the kid like, likes the schools that the kids are in. So, whatever. Yeah. I guess I, I almost kids. done. Yeah, six more years. Then the youngest is done with school. Six more years. Well, what about the next one you're going to have on the way? Aren't you guys trying again? If we have another kid, it would be a homunculus. Like I'd be able to charge admission to see that kid because I'm With on the radiation. Radiation, yeah. Like I'm still on cancer meds, and my wife is, um, she's, uh, she's on a like a cancer med for her melanoma. So yeah, it would 
it would not be a good idea to this have is this. also the origin story of the next real life superhero it could be yeah really- yeah you never know kid comes out flying or super villain could be a super villain Ooh. yeah anything, anything's possible yeah all right yeah. so back to back to fang yeah yeah you can't can't give away too much you just uh do you do you follow kind of the the flyway? Do you have good relationships in there? Well, that is that is definitely something I wanted to focus on in the in the writing of Fang is that, and a lot of it was inspired by my own life, my relationship with my dad, and his relationship with his mother. So, I I drew a lot of the dramatic elements from that. And it's funny because there was some, you know, I remember there was somebody who read, was read the script for Fang and said that, you know, like this part is a little bit over the top. People don't really talk like that. Families don't really have arguments like this. And I said, this is word for word the same as conversations that I've had with my dad. So it was, so I thought that was. And that's something that seems a lot funnier to me than it does to most people. Yeah. But but so I got a lot of ideas for Fang from there and and the the crux of the movie centers around Billy's relationship with his mother, Gina, and Gina's caregiver, Myra, who moves in to live with them to take care of her because she's too sick to be able to take care of herself. And then Billy feels attracted to Myra because she's closer to his age. And Gina feels threatened by the fact that Billy is attracted to another woman than her, which leads to a very dark family dynamic. But as you can imagine... Psycho, the movie Psycho. A little yeah, bit. yeah, and that's a, that's a great compliment for me too. That's that's a huge inspiration for me artistically. You know, that's, that's your tagline. That's that's your pull. That's your pull quote. Um, yeah. It's a combination. Psycho meets the fly. That's oh a yeah, quote. that's a pull quote for your poster. Put <laughs> me on it right there. Pop culture podcast says it's the Psycho meets the fly. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I think yeah, that that's. Absolutely, yeah. That's that's a great, great way to promote it. So, would you would you cast Ezra Miller as Billy if you had a chance? <laughs> yeah, say yes. <laughs> you need to be involved in a scandal. Maybe Amber Heard yeah. is the caretaker. <laughs> well, I guess I'm a little bit early in my career to be scandalized. I hey, have a few more movies sure. under my belt. They're probably looking for some work now. So, yeah, well, you never know. Never know. I'm sure, as we're shopping at TJ Maxx, so she could have been picking up an application. Did you see that? Yeah, Did you see that one outfit she was wearing to court. She looked like Doctor Evil. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was either a Doctor Evil or I don't know. It looked like a Chinese dictator suit. <laughs> it was it was ridiculous. Here, yeah. I, I, let me pull it up on screen here. It was. I can't like not see that when I uh, think of it. There she is. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is. That's the exact same outfit. (laughs) Except she killed the cat that comes with it. Oh, it's got to be a Photoshop. She didn't do that. No way. (laughs) You saw the clip of her doing coke in court, right? Yeah, I did. No, I didn't. I didn't. That's that's pretty blatant. Well, she takes her nap or handkerchief thing and then gives like a oh oh, just wiping my nose. <laughs> well, like whoa. I mean, she's pretty. I mean, she has to have like she has very misplaced feelings of being invincible. If she was to do coke in a courtroom, <laughs> I'll translate. He means big old beach ball size lady nuts. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's play that clip. 
anybody that's... Oh, you got her? Yeah. The South African. Hello, Mzansi. It is Saturday, May 7, 2022, and here is Lifestyle Highlight. Did actress Amber Heard snort cocaine live in court? A suspicious clip of Amber Heard in court has raised alarm bells from tweets who are suggesting she may have snorted cocaine during her live testimony. The clip, which has gone viral on social media, shows the actress appearing on the witness stand. But it is her mannerisms, like sniffing into a tissue and wiping her nose repeatedly, that have raised eyebrows. Amber and Johnny are embroiled in a messy $100 million defamation case in the Fairfax. That was probably well, she did sniff. When it, yeah. yeah, it was a sniff. I guess it's it's ambiguous. At least she was clever enough to, you know, keep it under the radar somewhat. With if it was coke on the napkin, which it, and I and I do get the sense that there was something on there. She was sniffing. Maybe it was just some Vicks. Maybe she just had a stuffy nose. Just wanted to clear her nose. Vix Vape or Rope. Maybe not. Did you Always. see the, the pictures of Princess Leia with the Coke nail? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I didn't see that either. Yeah, for in Star Wars, she kept the, her pinky fingernail long for oh, wow. doing cocaine. And everybody well, that was like the 70s. Like They used to have like bowls of Coke on set like for most film sets i guess to get and i and i can see the wisdom in that you know when you have like a 12 hour filming day but it does it does tend to drive up liability costs if there you, you go according to richard i want to be in your next movie is this guy sees the benefits of having coke on set at all times <laughs> 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 all right yeah put me in fang too Sign me up. I'll do it for just to be on set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you what the set benefits. Yep. Oh, oh you're right. Now. Wow. This is from uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, that's uh well, that's a detail I missed when I was a kid. <laughs> I guess I wasn't on the lookout back then. Cook mail. I uh, hope I didn't ruin Return of the Jedi for you. Now. No, it's, I mean, my child. She didn't already... have. She didn't have the money to do it in Episode Four. By then, you know, you got to get a couple of them under. Yeah. No, but apparently, her and Harrison Ford were having a raging affair during Episode Four. Yeah. They were just fucking all the time. Really? Well, I mean, he's Harrison Ford. I mean, he's yeah. yeah. You know, he has that magnetism that you know. Harrison Ford quality that it's just hard to resist him. <laughs> like yeah. I'm straight and I find it hard to resist him too. <laughs> so you're, you're, would you release a sex tape between you and Harrison Ford? Is that no, I mean maybe not maybe not He's, that far, but that would get you that would put you on the yeah, map. That, well, that would that's definitely a way to get attention if attention is what you want. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if Harrison <laughs> Ford did a, did a sex tape. Like, I wonder if the, I think he did. Yeah. Harrison Ford, I think he, he did. Probably. There's something floating around somewhere out there. Yeah. Would you pay for it, Tom? Would you buy a Harrison Ford sex tape? No. No? You know, it's just not into it? What if it was. If he, if he does another Indiana Jones just to piss him off, I'll watch it out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. No, he hurt himself a lot on this past Indiana Jones shoot. He was in. Yeah. Play. I don't know. I don't, it's surprising that that guy is still working. You know, guys like Sean Connery, Gene Hackman, yeah. Jack Nicholson, they quit when they knew they were ready to quit. Yeah. He's just not quitting. No. Well, I mean, I think it's like once you get the urge to do it, that it's hard, you know, to, to stop. Like, you would like it would be very hard to convince me to stop, you know, wanting to make movies because it it's the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's also a great high that comes from that. And yeah. really the high of seeing everything come together with a movie that's better than any drug. 
So I think it's hard to get out of the game once you're in the game, but then the game can have very bad consequences and you can end up, you know, like Ezra Miller. So mm-hmm. it's, so with filmmaking, like if you're cursed, if you want to do it and you're cursed, if you don't do it. So it's, it's kind of, it's like the greatest lose lose situation ever. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Right, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, cautiously optimistic about the next indiana jones movie you know from what i'm hearing it sounds like it might be all right like i like james mangold i think he's a really good director um i think if anybody's gonna do it justice it'll it'll be him you know i'm kind of disappointed that george lucas and steven spielberg both walked away from it but we'll see maybe it just needed some fresh blood after uh yeah last one the crystal skull movie we'll see yeah We'll see. People, you know, you can, you can never go back. Like, people want things yeah. the same way they were. You know, like, people want Star Wars from the 70s. You know, that's the Star Wars that people want. They want us to go back to that kind of Star Wars we had in 1977. And, you know, society and culture, we've moved forward. We have new ideas. We have, you know, new thought processes. We, we just can't go back all the time. we got to try new things. Yeah. And even if you made a movie that was exactly like that, you know, like, we've changed. We've grown up too so like even if it was exactly the same like you would be seeing it differently like as an adult like anything i watch like if i watch something that i really liked watching when i was a kid if i watch it now it's going to play a lot differently to me now because i see everything differently i'm seeing things that i never would have noticed before so i think people like want to go back to their childhoods which is kind of sad, actually, because you can go back once you've grown up. It's it's a done deal. Yeah, sometimes you just can't go back. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of stuff you got to leave in your head. Don't go back. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, like I used to watch the movie um, Explorers all the time, you know, with Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix watch that like every night i watch wrestling every night now i try to watch that stuff now and it just doesn't doesn't hold my interest anymore i don't know why yeah no you just can't go back so what other movies have you made is this is fang your first movie have you uh, done other films this is my first feature film yeah although i do have several other projects in the works that i'm hoping to get into after this and i do want to warn people as we were talking about you know wanting to go back to your childhood that children should not watch any of my movies. I am very much an adult oriented filmmaker. So I don't want to get any angry parents saying that I watched this filth with my kids after you were talking about it on your show. So that's why I want to put the warning out yeah. there. Right the guy's got bowls of Coke all over the set. You think your yeah. kids should be watching this? Come on. <laughs> You saw saw Richard's Coke nail. Come on now. (laughs) All right. Well, very very exciting. Yeah, I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing it. I hope uh, when you thank you, you send us uh, you send us a screener for it so we can check it out. Absolutely. No, definitely. I will be very vocal as soon as Fang is finished, and you know I'm excited to see what you guys think. It really shouldn't be too much longer and i've been saying that you know for about a year now but i I really think we're close to getting it done now (laughs) well take your time and finish it you know it's uh, i want to see it you can't can't pull a george lucas and go make a special edition 10 years from now (laughs) make it the best film that you can and be proud of yeah yeah well now like after like after editing it for a while like after like when you go through post-production long enough, like eventually it feels like I'm making a fan edit of my own movie. So I'm seeing things that I didn't notice the first time around that I'm like, all right, well, you know, this would be better to change. So, and it's, and it's a lot of anxiety for me because it's, you know, you know, I want it to be done. It'll be a huge load off, you know, to get that movie finished, to get it out there 
it'll be a huge relief. But at the same time, I'm glad that I've had this time to do it because if I rushed it to get it out right away, that would be, you know, there would be a lot of, you know, errors in the movie and it would make me look bad. It would make me look like an amateur. So I want to really do justice to the footage I have. I want to make sure it's as good as it can possibly be before I release it to the world. Yeah. And we're talking about your sex tape. Again. <laughs> Someday. Someday. Just get that, get, get that color, color just right. Got to look like a hot dog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the hot dog skin. <laughs> All right. All right. On that note, I think it's time to wrap things up. Richard, thank you for coming on. Looking thank forward. you. Nice thank to meet you. you. Yeah. We have to have you back on when, when Fang is yeah, done. Absolutely, and yeah. No, that no, was great hanging out with you guys. We had a lot of fun. Well, I hope we all had fun. Oh, yeah. Talking. We had a blast. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can never tell when somebody is, like, secretly homicidal, but I think we all had <laughs> fun. <laughs> all right. That wraps it up for episode 71 of the Pop Culture Podcast. Join us next week. We'll be back same time, same channel. Have a good week.